Hi everyone, Dr. Mike here. In this video, we're gonna take a look at the filtration membrane in the kidneys. So remember, your kidneys, two of them, are made up of things called nephrons, and they're the subunits of the kidneys that do all the filtering. Now, they do it at an area called the glomerulus. Remember, you're gonna have an afferent arterial coming in, and then what looks like a ball of yarn, but I've simplified it here, termed the glomerulus. This is where things get pushed out into the nephron. Remember, this is called the glomerular capsule, which wraps around the glomerulus, and that's called the efferin arteriole. Anything that didn't get pushed out continues through. Now, when we talk about filtration, I told you 120 milliliters per minute gets pushed through from the blood into the capsule. And only 1% of this continues all the way through to be peed out, the rest gets thrown back into the body. Question is, of all that stuff that gets pushed out, what gets pushed out and why? And it's all because of three filtration membranes. All right? So the three filtration membranes, number one is the filtration membrane that comprises the blood vessel itself. Remember, all hollow organs and structures and external structures are lined by epithelia. Right? So what we've got inside of a blood vessel is epithelia, but we call it endothelia. Now, I've got endothelia there, but it's endothelia. And when we look at the glomerulus, the endothelia at the glomerulus have holes in it. This is called fenestrated endothelia. So fenestrated just means holes. So number one, we have fenestrated endothelia at the glomerulus. Now, the width of these fenestrated endothelia. So what size things can get through? It only lets through things that are between 70 to 100 nanometers, that's its diameter. So anything smaller than that, it lets through. Now, let's put that into perspective, okay? When you've got one meter, one meter, you divide that by a thousand and you've got a millimeter, you divide, so you've got one meter, and then you divide it by a thousand and you get one millimeter, you divide that by a thousand and you get one micrometer, you divide that by 1000, and you get one nanometer. All right, so 70 to 100 nanometers, very small. What can it let through? Well, let's think about it. Let's think about red blood cells going past. How big is a red blood cell? They're pretty small. They're 10 micrometers. That's here though. 10 micrometers means it's way too big to get through. This is 100 nanometers, and a red blood cell is 10 micrometers. Okay, so it's way too big to get through. What about a white blood cell that's coming through? Well, white blood cells are bigger than red blood cells. White blood cells are around about 100 micrometers, so it's definitely not getting through. But everything else that's small enough will. So that means proteins are gonna get through, ions are gonna get through, glucose is gonna get through, fluid's gonna get through. So this first membrane is simply gonna be the fenestrated endothelia. It's a membrane for cells. It's not letting cells through, okay? Now the next one, remember, all epithelia sit on top of connective tissue. That's just what it is, all throughout the body. All endothelia sit on connective tissue. The connective tissue here, called the basement membrane, is filled with collagen. And one thing you should know about collagen, it's negatively charged. Now this is important because proteins, which are gonna be floating through, also are negatively charged. And what do we know about like charges? They repel each other. So the basement membrane being negatively charged because of collagen repels proteins. This is the protein membrane. Doesn't let proteins through. Now the third membrane, these little things that look like they've got extensions, they're called podocytes, I've written that up here, and their diameter, they can let some things through. What's their diameter that they're letting through? It's between it's around about between 10 to 40 nanometers, which is even smaller than that of the fenestrated endothelia, which means that's even too small for most proteins. So it's another, again, it's gonna stop any cells that may have gotten through. It should be stopping most proteins that have made it through as well. So again, that's the podocytes. These are the three membrane layers. It's the fenestrated endothelia, it's the basement membrane that's negatively charged, and it's the podocytes as well. They're the three, which means 
Here, there should be, should there be cells? No. Should there be proteins? No. What happens if we have, let's just say, something called glomerular nephritis, where your antibodies are attacking this basement membrane and that's destroyed? What do you think might be getting through? Proteins, because that is the layer that predominantly stops proteins. Therefore, if you're peeing out a lot of proteins, they may have a look and go, maybe this individual is in the acute stage of glomerular nephritis. So that's a quick run through of glomerular filtration membranes.